Japan. Japan has some of the world's richest biodiversity. There are a number of local efforts to protect nature. The reintroduction of locally extinct white storks. A traditional method to preserve natural streams. A microorganism with amazing properties discovered in a forest. A look at the bonds between humans and nature. Welcome to Green Style Japan. Our program focuses on sustainable lifestyles and green ideas here in Japan. And today's theme is? Biodiversity. Yeah, that's right. As an environmental consultant, how do you define this? Uh, biodiversity simply means the variety of all life living forms on this planet. Um, and the interrelation between all living forms, including us humans, of course. Um, you can see the connections in nature, like we rely on uh, biodiversity to get clean air, clean water, medicines. Even a healthy economy um, depends or rely on a healthy biodiversity. We start off with white storks. As a result of efforts to protect this species, it's led to the revival of entire ecosystems. Surrounded by mountains, Toyooka City has long been known for its rice production. In September 2005, thousands of people gathered here. Storks, once extinct in Japan, were released back into nature on this day. Through the town's people's efforts and care, the number of storks has been increasing. Now, five years after their first release, the number of storks living in the wild has increased to 42. It's painstaking work to reintroduce wild animals to areas where they have disappeared. What kind of efforts made the revival possible? Many years ago, storks survived on frogs and fish in rice paddies and streams. But in the 1950s, chemical pesticides were introduced, killing off waterfront creatures and ruining the health of storks. The number of storks started falling and the last wild stork died in 1971. People were determined to bring the storks back. In 1985, Toyooka received six young storks from Habarovsk of the former Soviet Union. Four years later, the first healthy chicks were born. The people of Toyooka took great care to raise them. The number of storks increased until there were more than 100. Then townspeople began releasing them into the wild. To create an environment where storks could survive, cooperation of the local farmers was essential. Pesticide-dependent farming had to be changed. Now, pellets made from rice bran are used instead of herbicide. These are scattered when rice seedlings are planted. The acid from rice bran withers the roots of weeds. In order to invite fish into the paddies, fish ladders were created in the ditches connecting the river and rice paddies.
with fish ladders, Crucian carp and loaches return to the rice paddies. In this way, the healthy ecosystem of long ago started to come back. These sludge worms digest organic matter, creating rich, smooth soil. There is an abundance of water fleas. Dragonfly larvae love to eat these tiny bugs. Fish, too, survive on these small creatures. A frog is trying to catch a shield bug, which feeds on rice plants. The original food source for storks is returning. In the second spring after the stork's release, a chick was hatched in the wild. Its parents could find enough food in the paddies to satisfy its enormous appetite. In July, many people anxiously awaited the fledgling to leave its nest. After a 46-year absence, a stork born in the wild finally flew in the skies of Toyooka. Now, it's not rare to see these birds in the rice paddies. Toyooka is still keeping up with its stork breeding efforts. Townspeople want to release more of them into the wild. They have created a marshy place to educate people about the habitat suitable for storks. Our reporter, Ginger Vaughn, visited the breeding area of these white storks. Minoru Sato works here as a breeder. He's like a mother to these storks. まあ、私この仕事して the scene of storks feeding in rice paddies has become a symbol of safe rice. An achievement of the farmer's ideas and efforts. Because of its labor intensity, the price of this rice is 40% more than the average, but it's proving to be popular. The symbol of the stork has become proof of organic products. 
the Stork brand is regarded with great pride in Toyooka. あの、田んぼに降りたり、家に泊まったりする姿を見ているとね。あの、すごくあの、なんて言ったらいいんでしょうね。穏やかな気分を人に与えてくれる。それ確かですね。あの、コウの鳥はここだけのもんじゃない。
この声がいいなんだよこの顔はドボーンとしたこのはたいきはドボーンとしたなもんやけどこれが美しい掃除してくれるけどカレーの鍋でもつけとくと美しいねってくれますわここつけると美しいねぶで、まあ、洗うこといらんぐれ<笑>カバタ is a system to clean the water before it is discharged Where does the water originally come from? About 20 kilometers to the west, the Hida Mountains rise to the height of some 600 meters. Moist air from the sea hits the mountains to create a large amount of rain and snowfall, which is stored by forests. This water is then filtered through leaf soil as it seeps into the ground. It becomes groundwater and wells up in Harie to be used by its people. In streams in the town, you'll even find the Baikamo water plant, which grow only in limpid streams. The water that comes to Harie eventually flows into Lake Biwa. Born in Harie, Masakatsu Fukuda has worked as a fisherman in Lake Biwa for nearly 60 years. The boat is navigated through the shallow reedy waters which shelter fish native to the area. Fukuda pulls up a trap set up to catch Nigorobuna, a subspecies of carp native to Lake Biwa. Nigorobuna has been used for over a thousand years in making preserved food in this area. Wishing to protect the lake that nurtures this fish, the people of Harie strive to keep the water that goes into Lake Biwa clean. In and around Lake Biwa, water continues to bring people and nature together. Well, here we have a bamboo cup used for actually ecotourism in that area. So, How do they, do they use it? Maybe. Well, basically, um, these are given to visitors, mm -hmm. foreigners, Japanese alike, and um, volunteer guides take the, the tourists and uh, show them the areas where they can drink tasty water. And, you know, talking about water, I learned a very good thing in Japan. It's a way of saying uh, the kitchen is actually the entrance on the river. Kitchen is the entrance of the river. That's right. Well, in this town, it's true, isn't it? It is really true. And it says everything, I think, because we don't really think today where the stuff goes out from a house, how it affects the environment and where it goes and when it comes back. So we lose the control somehow, don't we? 
Exactly. I, that's I how mean... I feel. Yeah, it's like big, big cycles that we have no control over. But in this town, they have succeeded to do a very interesting solution to this, which means if there appears to be an environmental problem, you can solve it very quickly. Yeah. And we have a lot of things to learn from this city, I think. All right, now moving on. Heyo, have you heard of Shirakami Mountains, one of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites? Yeah, of course, it's a beautiful place. Our next video shows an amazing discovery that took place there. A popular bakery at a station in a suburb of Tokyo. People say that there is something different about this bread. The bread is blessed with the bounty of nature, which comes from the Shirakami Mountains, a World Heritage Site. This primeval beach forest in the northern part of Japan is one of the largest of its kind in the world. These steep mountains have kept people out for over 8,000 years. This ancient forest is the cradle of life for many species. Keitaro Takahashi, a researcher of food product development, found something special in this forest. What does the soil have to do with the bread? Takahashi discovered in the soil a wild yeast that is the key to making delicious bread. He named it Shirakami Kodama Yeast. Research found that it has features non-existent in regular yeast. Trehalos in the yeast adds a natural sweetness to the bread. Akita Prefecture, in which the Shirakami Mountains are located, has acquired a patent on this yeast. It generates a $44 million a year business. Shirakami Kodama yeast is becoming known all over Japan. Students come from around the country to attend the bread baking classes of Setsuko Otsuka. They come to learn how to better use the yeast for bread making. Otsuka has studied bread making using this yeast for many years. Trehalos is capable of high water retention, keeping the bread soft and moist. The yeast makes this possible without the help of eggs, milk, or butter. This can be good news for children with allergies to certain ingredients. The students start kneading the dough along with the music. They are serious. The yeast becomes more active with this rhythm.
Now the bread is ready to eat. However, the home of this yeast, the Shirakami Mountains, are in a critical state at the moment. Takahashi, who discovered the yeast, also shares his concern. There are still many unknown microorganisms that exist in this primeval forest, but if global warming continues, they could face extinction. Takahashi and others have started what's known as the Shirakami Micro Bank, an attempt to keep microorganisms from this forest in frozen storage. Will we be able to hand down this wealth to future generations? That is the question. Great, looks delicious, right? World Heritage bread. Exactly. Yeah. Let's have a let's have a try. Okay. This Break one. this. This piece off here. Looks nice. Wow, mine's delicious. Very great. It's like very light. Taste of world heritage, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you go out in nature, you just stand there looking into the forest, you might discover things that you have never ever imagined was there. And that's a treasure that we can find in all places on this planet. So um, in this place, we found this fantastic East here in Japan. But the viewers today, they should go out and, in their forest and see what they can find. Because I'm sure just around the corner, there's some new eco-business that you can do. And it's quite exciting and delicious, right? OK, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching Green Style Japan. Please join us again next time.